is a big idea, a new world order. Your world is not what it seems. Alex Tansuri, Outside the Box. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another new edition of Outside the Box. Last week I talked about some of the uh, financial problems that PCM is facing, so this is a taped show. We are not live tonight. In fact, at the moment it is Stupid Bowl Sunday, February 7th, 2010. And I'd like to thank my friend and director, Bill, for coming in tonight so we can get this week's show on the air. I hope you appreciated last week's show and that at least uh, you were somewhat entertained. Um, we did very little editing. We just edited for time when we were doing our uh, Man on the Street interview with uh, the people of Portland on Hawthorne Boulevard. And for the most part, we got a lot of um, surprising responses. In fact, some people just want to keep talking and keep talking and keep talking. And so there's a lot of polls out there that are showing where public opinion is. But if you really want to do your own poll and really find out, really like test the pulse of your neighborhood, talk to your neighbors, talk to your friends, take a video camera, start a YouTube channel, do a man on the street. That's a better way to gauge where the public is. And so uh, even though a lot of people in Portland aren't fully awake to some of the things that I'm talking about on this show, a lot of people are becoming more awake to the fact that we have to build community, come together when these things transpire. So every moment, every second that we still have left on the air is extremely valuable at this time. And I'm very grateful for having this platform the last five years to give you a different perspective on what's transpiring in the world right now. But you're going to be need needing to become more computer literate, if you will, if you want to keep up with me online. Uh, there is the website, alexansory.com. So if you miss a show there, uh, you can actually go over even to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash alexansory, and watch it there. This show is actually going to be uh, uploaded tonight. If you go to uh, keepvid.com, you can actually punch in or uh, copy-paste a URL of a YouTube video, and you can actually download it onto your computer. And so, you know, with technology that we have right now, it's important that you save the information that you like that uh, you find on the Internet, certain videos, because there's no guarantee that it's going to be there in the future. You can also send your friends a link to the website of the latest TV show on YouTube.com. One more announcement, and then we're going to launch directly into the news. A lot to talk about tonight pertaining to China and the United States. More tensions, more news, and we're going to cover it. LibertyNewsRadio.com is a website where I have decided that I'm going to go back on the air daily. 6 o'clock to 7 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. And this is uh, probably mo one of the most effective ways I can utilize some of the free time that I have is to get back on the air while we still have the internet. And uh, I need to think less about just the Portland audience, but think about the global audience, because the things that I'm talking about certainly are global in nature, and uh, that's why there's an audience listening in Europe. And so definitely I think I'm going to be doing that. LibertyNewsRadio.com, the first day that I'm going to be on the air is February 15th, 2010. So if you can't get on this show, I encourage you to call me. And with that, let's uh, launch directly into the news. Global military spending, recession-proof. Money is tight everywhere, as you all know, until it's time to fund the military. According to a report by the London-based International Institute for Strategic Studies, one group has been completely unaffected by the global economic meltdown. The military. They're also meeting all of their recruitment goals. They're very happy. The economic crisis hasn't had a dramatic impact on defense spending in the past 18 months, one of the IISS economists, Mark Stoker, noted. In fact, worldwide, the report showed that military spending actually grew in a significant way over the past couple of years, from $1.3 trillion worldwide in 2006 to $1.5 trillion in 2008, and that's what they're admitting. There's also a lot of stuff that's um, taking place over the course of the last week with the, the new budget for the military. And uh, so there are some serious preparations for war in the future. And we are seeing history repeat itself to a certain degree. And we're very close to the crash of the U.S. economy. And so this information isn't here to scare you. It's intended to empower you and awaken you to some of these things that are transpiring so you can make the right decisions in your life. I think teenagers right now should be given an education by their parents about how not to get in debt. How not to, you know, forget to read the fine print when you get a credit card, when you uh, get a student loan. Uh, I have nothing against people out there or my friends that are 
getting an education, but learn about how much money you're borrowing and uh, the repercussions for not being able to pay back that loan. Very important to educate yourself in this uh, seemingly wonderland, never-ending world of disinformation and mind manipulation and control. The trend shows no sign of reversing with the United States responsible for nearly half of that spending by itself, looking at record war budgets moving forward, according to the Obama administration. The IISS report said only Russia was anticipating a reduction in spending among major nations. The economic downturn has left governments across the world looking at ways to curb spending. But so far, few nations are looking at the military as a place to make cuts. As political unrest grows and more nations bring out austerity programs, it seems likely that military spending will come under renewed scrutiny. I highly doubt that last sentence there. Military is just getting more money and more money and more money. Let's go back briefly to the underwear bomber. Christmas Day, you know, a time where people are trying to visit their families and here comes another terror attack, America. Here comes the TSA working on the guys of Homeland Security coming to save you, putting body scanners up all throughout the nation and even mo mobile body scanners. That is to say, driving by in a car, scanning people on the street. They're unveiling that in the Netherlands at this time. In Israel, they're talking about mind scanning. EEG reading technology that they plan to put in the airport. It's junk science. We all know that. But the government's saying, yes, we recognize this as uh, legal in the court of law. Uh, we are going to go ahead and install these EEG reading, brain reading devices in airports to see whether you're a terrorist or not. But to go back to the underwear bomber, he was aided onto a plane by a sharp-dressed man. You haven't seen the surveillance footage, just like you never saw the footage of the plane going into the Pentagon. We have not seen the surveillance footage of him actually getting on the plane. And the reason is, an eyewitness already reported, Kirk Haskell, who's actually also an attorney. He has stated publicly on even many mainstream networks that he saw an Indian, English-speaking, well-dressed man take him to a TSA agent, or actually it wasn't the TSA, this was actually... Um, in Europe, but their equivalent of it, and said, hey, he doesn't have a visa, he doesn't have papers, he's from Sudan, we do this all the time. And the government initially denied that there was a second accomplice, and now they're having to admit it, but they're still not showing you the videotape. So you need to ask yourself, what is reality when you hear about potential false flags in the future, cyber attacks on the internet, we'll talk about that later on tonight, they're seeking to take control over the internet and kill this free flow of information. Ask yourself, do you really believe what the government's saying, what the mainstream media is saying, all these different threats and all these different ways they want to control all these different parts of our everyday lives? And ask yourself, of course, who stands to benefit? Who stands to gain? Going back into this report, we're going to move on to the next because they're planning for another war to pull us out of this economic meltdown. They've been preparing for war for a long time. And I mean they, I just don't mean the United States but China, India, Pakistan, a lot of our allies and their allies as well. Russia is very much involved at this time. This isn't Cold War rhetoric trying to get you to take a side or fear China or fear this or fear that. It's a reality we have to look at. And they're sharing weapons technology at the same time they're preparing to go to war with one another. And we're all so intertwined economically. It makes me ask the question, on a regular basis. What's really going on? Who's really behind this? How are we, the people, going to benefit from another war? How is this not going to tear our society apart? And how are we not going to go, go to war with, the, with China if we attack Iran? If you start reading all the different reports, and we're going to cover some of it tonight, you'll understand that something very scary is emerging in the future. And we have to educate as many people as we can to avert the crisis that they're engineering if it's potentially possible. And I think with information, education, we can wake a lot of people up. And a lot of people are waking up because they have access to information like this. And the next report, it reads that uh, the United States has launched the largest Asian war games in Thailand. The U.S. military began its largest war games in the Pacific region Monday.